This morning, I want you to understand whether it's a Republican in the office or Democratic president in the office, it doesn't matter. The gospel opportunity for gospel is even in America is coming to a close down setup. While it is day, let's make hay. How many of you understand what I'm saying? There is a time coming when you want to, you cannot. There is a time coming when you want to go for the sake of the gospel, you cannot go. So let's just prepare ourselves for the end time harvest. Hallelujah. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, if you read in the Bible, you see that time and again, when Israel sinned, what did God do? God sent a foreign nation or a king, and they would what? Take the Israel into what? Captivity. For a set sign in Babylonian captivity, they were 70 years. In Egypt, they were 400 years. And then what happened? They began to what? Cry out. Everybody say, cry out. Turn to your neighbor and say, cry out. We are like, oh, that's not American church, Brother John. We are very professional. We are what? Very professional. We are taught how to behave. But let me tell you something. When the rubber meets the road, professionalism gets out of the way. You hear me? Every time a king would occupy Israel, they would cry out to God, and God would raise a deliverer, and God would bring them out. But this time, the prophetic calendar is ticking. The prophetic what? calendar is what? Ticking. You know what's happening in the Middle East. You know what is happening between China and Taiwan. They are preparing. Russia just two days ago told China, if you want to go after Taiwan, this is the right moment for you. Because we are in an election season, and everybody is more, po politics is what plays. So this is the moment you can do because America is busy in campaigning. So watch this. This is exactly the moment God has set up for the church to shine. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe it? See, in the book of Israel, in the book of Acts, whenever the church went through a dark moment, there came a harvest out of it. Hallelujah. When the transition came after the dark moments in the church history, or if, if you see, even if you go back in the time of the birth of Jesus, when the transition was happening, what happened? Every child, male child was what? Every male child was murdered. We celebrated Christmas, right, recently? We never think about this. At the time of the birth of Jesus Christ, they were trying to kill every male child which is less than two years old. Do, can you imagine living in a situation like this and here is a single lady who has not known a man pregnant and God is protecting that child. Hello? <laughs> Take for example the time of Moses. When Moses the deliverer was born, Every male child in Israel was killed. But Moses was kept. Let's come to Daniel's time. During the time of the captivity of Daniel's time, you see everybody was in captivity, but God prospered Daniel to speak the word of the Lord concerning the end times. See, whenever the situation in the world gets dark, don't lose hope. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That means that is the time for us to shine. Hallelujah. When the, when the darkness becomes very gross, the light becomes very bright. 
So this is the moment that God is orchestrating globally for his church to shine in this hour. That means you and me are the vessels that God is looking for in this moment to bear the light. Hallelujah. This is the moment God wants the church to shine Jesus in every situation. This is the moment God wants the church to cry out to God and call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When Peter was put in prison, when, 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 when Herod tried to harass the church, the church got together in Acts chapter 12 and began to pray and I know that you guys had a prayer revival don't quit praying as a church because this is the hour America needs a church to call on the name of the Lord it is the church that God wants to use in this hour it is the children of God, the people of God, that God wants to use in this hour to bring the message of the gospel, to bring the hope of Jesus Christ, to bring salvation. You, I'm going to tell you something. Things are going to get so radically so dark that if you are true born-again Christian, people will come and hold your collar and say, I want what you have. How can you be joyful? How can you have peace? How can you have hope? Hope. How can you stand when we are crying? They will come and say, there is something in you that I want. Are we ready for it? That's what God is doing. If you just bear with me for a few minutes. I just want to go to three passages. The Lord put this in my heart. First one is Genesis chapter 28. Here is Isaac blessing Jacob. And sending him off with a blessing that belonged to who? Esau. So the mama played a very beautiful card. I call it beautiful. <laughs> Called the son and said, hey, your dad is going to bless Esau. He wants some deer meat from hunting, gaming meat. You know, he's gone for gaming and he's going to bring. So he said, I'm going to cook it. So put on a skin a fur on your hand and she put on Esau's clothes so that he can smell like Esau and Isaac cannot see, he's blind and mother is, how many of you know this, this happens in families? Oh, you all look very holy. Huh? Mama sets up everything for you and the dad doesn't know and he falls into the trap. The dad sets up everything for you and the mama doesn't know you fall into the trap. So here is Jacob, a small boy, little boy, and you know, already is so smart. What's his name? What's the meaning of Jacob? Huh? Supplanter. What does supplanter means? He is a, a born deceiver. By default, he can do it. So here is his brother Esau going to hunting and coming back weary, tired. And he's saying, oh my God, I need something. I'm about to faint. Uh, and here is his younger brother cooking a red soup, red beans and rice with sausage. <laughs> Probably was making gumbo. <laughs> and here comes his older brother saying, oh my God, mm, I love gumbo. Oh, can you give me some? He's like, ah, what are you going to give me? And here is Isa saying, what is this birthright? I don't care about all these things. He did not understand the meaning of it. And he said, you can have my birthright. So he gave away the birthright that belongs to him. And here is the supplanter saying, here is red beans and rice. And I've got some folk music. And I make you dance after you eat the gumbo. But I'm taking your birthright. And here now, Isaac is so old in age, he cannot see. It's time for him to bless his children. And this battle between the siblings is going on already. It's growing. It started from his mother's belly. The Bible says Jacob held what? The heel of his brother because what he said, you're not going first, boy, I'm the one. He was very prophetic even in his mother's womb. 
Because he understood the hand. Jacob knew the hand of God was upon him, not on his brother. So he tried to surpass oh, his brother, but it didn't happen. And here is the time for blessing. Isaac didn't know anything. And here he blesses Jacob in his sense. So the blessing started with what? Huh? Deception. You all know the story or not? Some of you look like I'm talking from some other religion. You all read Bible? Huh? Oh my God, now people are smiling. Am I speaking too much Indian? Am I speaking English? Anybody clear understanding that? Okay, so here, the foundation of his blessing is what? Deception. Who set it up? His mother. And now, the mama calls him and says, Oh my God, your brother is here. He's going to kill you. You run to your uncle's place. That's my brother, my kin, my family. I don't like your dad's side. Go to my side of the family. How many of you know in the families it happens? I hate your side of the family. I don't know why I married you. Boy, you got to my side of the family. Here is a mama setting this up, saying, Run to your uncle. Your uncle will take care of you. And Jacob is like, what did I do? I gotta leave my family. I gotta leave my mother. I got he's a mama's boy. His brother is gonna kill him. So here is a situation which is not very biblically right. It's not a situation where everything is conducive for heaven to endorse you. And here is set God is setting up. Everybody understand this. There are things happened in your life you are trying to fix the situation which is out of your reach out of your control stop trying to fix it accept the plan of god over your life so here is jacob saying i don't know where i'm going can you understand this oh my god he has never been to his uncle he does not know their last name he does not know the region but he's running for his life because mama did something and she said run and here he's leaving and he comes to a place verse 10 28, chapter 28 at verse 10. And now Jacob went forth from Beersheba and went towards Aran. And he came to a certain place. Everybody say certain place. I want you to underline that word certain place. Many of you fighting that certain place in your life because you are so stuck in your rut. You are so stuck in your situation. You are so stuck what happened in your childhood. You are so stuck in what happened as a teenager. You are so stuck what happened in your marriage. You are so stuck with what happened yesterday. But let me tell you, that is a plot of the devil to keep you thinking about your past and miss your future. Hallelujah. I came this morning to tell you it doesn't matter what happened to you it doesn't matter what you who did it it doesn't matter who set you up i don't know whether it was your mistake or your mama's mistake your mother-in-law's mistake or even the devil's mistake i don't care but i want you to keep moving forward to your destiny don't be concerned because you've got to come to a certain place to have an encounter with god i'd say this to you this morning prophetically god had set up things from your teenage life god has set up things from everything in your life right now in 2020 24 in the month of January hear me out clearly God has brought you to a place called certain place why God is going to open the heavens over your life God is going to speak to you God is going to ordain you God is going to set you up for a promise and a destiny that has been set up from heaven that you never had an understanding of how it is going to be but don't fight your past forget your past and embrace the working of God in your life are you listening to me? Oh, somebody's got to hear it. Hallelujah. Hey, Shabbat Rokum. Oh, there are certain places that God brings you to. Do you think he understood? He knew. He does not know anything. He's a cheater. He is deceiver, supplanter. All he knows is to do what he knows to do. That is in his blood. But he came to a certain place. And stayed there all night. Was it Marriott? J.W. Marriott? Where did he come to? A rock. He said, he came to a certain place, stayed there all night. You are wondering, oh, this, is, this cannot be a certain place, Pastor John. This cannot, you don't know where. I am not in a comfortable place. I am not 
having a shelter that I want. I am not having people around me that I want. I am all alone in a wilderness. All I have is a rock. Let me tell you, sometimes it's better for you to be alone than to have people with you who are not going with you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I say it again? Don't marry the wrong person. You will have hell all the way. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you, it's better for you to be single than to be married to somebody who's going to be in the way of the Lord. It's better for you to not have friends and follow Jesus than to have a group of people with you who take you away from your purpose, who take you away from the call of God. Let me tell you something. It's better for you to have Jesus than anybody else. See, God had to separate him. God had to what? Separate him from his mama. Some of you are still not separated from your mama. You still have your umbilical cord running around as a 40-year-old. Still got your sippy cup in your mouth. Oh, can I just meddle with you this morning? Some of you are still wearing diapers. That should have been done away with three, two years old, three years old. Why? You have been raised by a mama, always sitting you up. So you thought your God is also the same way. But God is about to reveal himself to you. So he has to bring you to a certain place, uh, which is nothing but a rock. Look at what it says here. All night. Some of you are saying, huh? if only you know what I'm going through. I know you're going through a night season. But let me tell you this, the devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. The night season only lasts for a season. The day is coming. The light is coming. So all night he stayed there. Sun had set. He took one of the stones of that place and put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. Can you sleep? The Lord gives sleep to who? Come on, talk to me. Hello, am I talking to you? You're all looking down. Am I talking prophetically to you? Some of you are having trouble sleeping. You need to, you need to go to the rocky place. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Your bed is too comfortable. Here he is in a rocky place. He's able to sleep. Why? He's running for his life. Hear me? He's running for his life. Some of you have not come to that place yet. That's why change is very far. You cannot change why you still want to play. Are you hearing me? You don't want to change why you still want to play. But Jacob played enough. And he has come to a place where if he does not follow God... His life is going to be in danger. So he's in a hard place, a rocky place. I'm saying this prophetically to somebody. You are still deceived. You are not understanding why your life is rocky at the moment. God is trying to wake you out of your deception. Don't bind it. It's not the devil. God brought you to this rocky place. God brought you to this lonely place. God brought you to this place of desert and dry and sand. And look at here. He's, he's spending the night. Then he dreamed. Oh my God, he's a dreamer. Look at it. says, then he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set on, on the earth. And it is reached the top to heaven. And there the angels of God ascended and descended on it. I want you to know something. If you embrace God... In the certain place, heaven will open over you. I'm prophesying to you. Somebody write it down. I'm prophesying this to you. Don't battle your rocky place. Do not fight your rocky place. Do not fight your stone. Embrace the will of God. Embrace the plan of God. It might be being alone. It might be being single. It might be without friends. It might be without this. It might be without that. I don't care. You are in 2024. What was supposed to be 10 years ago was different from 2024. Now now things that Jesus is going to come back very soon. You don't have time to play games anymore. It is time that we wake up to the reality of Christ and Christ alone. Heaven's open. 
a ladder was set, angels descending. And look at verse 13, it says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father. And you'll be like, I don't talk to me about my grandfather. Why? Where is he now? Then he says, I am the God of your father, Isaac. He's like, oh, I don't want that family. His wife set me up and that's why I'm here. And God is saying, I'm the God of, the, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, is this the land you're talking about? Dry place? Rocky place? Stony place? The land that you lie, I will give it to you and your descendants. What you talking about? I'm running from my family. I'm running away from my comfort. I'm running away from my bedroom. I'm running away from my servants. I'm running away from real lamb curry. I'm running away from oh, real good beef, uh, steak, and all those things that the family used to make. I'm running, I'm running, running, running. I'm a vagabond. I don't know what I'm doing. You're talking about my future. Where is the future in my life? I don't have a wife. I'm running for my life and God is talking to you. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. When you are talking to yourself, it will be about your situation for now. I'll give you examples. The same Rebecca, when she had a problem in her room, when she went and prayed, what did God tell? He talked about kingdoms to come. So listen carefully. Whenever you want to know when God is speaking and when you are talking to yourself, there is one denominator that divides both. You know what is the denominator? When God speaks to you, he will always speak to you concerning your future. When it is your soul talking to you, it is always about your now. Hello, did you hear me? God will always speak to you about something that you're not yet there. Here God is talking to Jacob. You're saying, I'm a supplanter. God, are you sure you're talking to me? You know me, I have problems. God knows. You have weakness, God knows. You have struggle, God knows. Your mental agony, God understands. Your emotional feelings that drive you nuts. One day you're up, one day you're down, and one day you're praising God, one day you want to curse God. And I don't know, you, things can go wrong, but you don't, don't you understand? God sees everything concerning you. Still, he talks to you. I don't know, if I was God, I wouldn't be talking to Jacob. Did you hear me? He says, your descendants, I will give this land to your descendants. And the later part of verse 14 says, and in you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 15, behold, I am with you. Verse 15, behold, I am what? I want you to understand this. I'm prophetically speaking to somebody. I prayed Friday and Saturday for a sermon. I never got a sermon. I came, sat in this bench. Boop, it just came, scriptures came alive in me. So I know this is a prophetic word for some of you. God is speaking to you in your wilderness. God is speaking to you in your stony, rocky place that you're at. God is speaking to you. You're talking, my descendants were descendants. What good can come out of me? And look at God is saying, I am with you. Do you hear the voice of God? My people hear me. God is speaking to you. Even though you are a deceiver, even though you are a supplanter, even though you are denied, even though you have fallen, even though you have missed your mark, even though you have sinned, even though you, have, you can say I'm fallen out of grace, whatever terminology, whatever you want to say, but God doesn't look at you like that and he looks at you from heaven and says because of Abraham, because of the faith of your forefathers, because because of the faith of your grandmother, because of the faith of your grandfather, because of the prayers of your grandmother, because of your prayers of your grandmother, and because of the seed of faith in you. Oh, God, is, when Paul talked to Timothy, that's what he said. 
Make, make a roar over your prophecies. There was faith imparted to you. And God saw the seed of Abraham in Jacob. Even though his life did not match with the seed. I came here to prophesy to somebody. Your life may not match with what you're supposed to be. Oh, You might be struggling in your life. But let me tell you. There was a time faith was imparted to you. There was a time you came face to face with Jesus. The word resides in you. Let me tell you something. He is not a man to push you away. If you have been once saved. And if God has touched you he's not going to leave you hallelujah and he says i know you are a deceiver i know you are here because of a problem i know you are here because of what happened in your life but let me tell you something in spite of all these things i will be with you <laughs> lift up your hands come on thank him thank him right now thank him right now thank him this is the goodness of god i'm telling you this is the goodness of god if the goodness of god was not there if the grace of god was not there i can tell you today the earth can open and most of us could have been gone already oh my god the holiness of god the righteousness of god that you and i cannot attain oh let me tell you something it is the grace and the goodness of god in spite of me hallelujah in spite of my struggles oh come on somebody in spite of my weaknesses it's the grace of Jesus that is keeping me oh somebody shout Jesus in this place come on come on give him praise give him praise come on come on give him praise for the goodness of God give him praise for his mercy give him praise for his blood give him praise that he's not given upon you he's not given upon us hallelujah oh the preach is coming on me excuse me I didn't plan for this <laughs> oh I am with you man will not say that to you a woman cannot say that to you they'll say go get your act together come back if I see the fruit, then I can help you. But look at heaven. Look at God. In spite of all these things, he says, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham. And then he said, behold, I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. He will keep you wherever you go. You got you to you hear the voice of God in your spirit, not in your mind. In your spirit. God is saying, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go. He does not know where he is going. But God is assuring, I understand, boy. Whatever has happened has happened, and you don't know where you're going, but I'm with you. I want to tell you something, 2024, hear me out. We don't know where we are going to go. We don't know what is going to happen. We don't know what might happen, what might not happen. But I want you to know one thing for sure. Like Jacob, God is promising you he is going to be with you. And he will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land. Why? Because of the promise he gave to Abraham. Until, I will not leave you until you have done what I have spoken to you. I want to talk to somebody in this room here. God will work with you. The last phrase. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Listen to me carefully. Though I was in a missions conference, there was an altar call to go on a mission to the nations. There was a lady who came to the altar call weeping, crying. She was sobbing. And I said, in my natural mind, you are 70 plus. You need help, honey. Where are you going to go? 
find a place in America where you can do ministry. You know what she told me? When I was 17, God called me. When I was 19, God confirmed it to me. But I did not obey God. I went my way. I went my way. Made money. Married. Marriage didn't work. Married another, it didn't work. But he said, now, I'm weak. I'm old. But God is still speaking to me that I should finish. You know why? He will not leave you until. He will not leave you until he has done what he has spoken to you. Because he is faithful. He is faithful. The plans of heaven doesn't change because you have a detour. The plans of heaven doesn't change because you took a wrong exit. He will wait as long as you cooperate. As long as he, Jacob had to come to this point. You think this was the end time of Jacob? No. This was the beginning of the journey because he was still a deceiver. I'll tell you why. Look at the next scripture, what it says. Then woke up next morning, surely the Lord is in this place. I did not know it. How will you know you're a deceiver? Look at Jacob. Hey, my God, how come I did not know that God is in this place? How would you know when you're walking with God? And he says, God is in this place. Why? Heaven's open. Angels came. Revelation happened. And he was so afraid, he said, oh, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Watch this. A wilderness, a rocky place, a stony pillow, not an air mattress, not a waterbed. At this moment of rocky, tough situation when nobody around, he says, this is house of God. I don't want to go further because I just want to wrap it up. And this is the gate of heaven. I don't know who I'm talking to. God is waiting. God is waiting. You're saying I made mistakes. You're saying I made mistakes. You're saying, I don't know if I can fix things. There's somebody saying this. I heard this in my spirit. John, it's not possible. I've gone too far along the way, out of the way. But this morning I came to tell you, he will bring you back. He will bring you back. He will bring you back. The house of the Lord was in that place and the gate of heaven. And the Bible says, Jacob rose up early in the morning, took that stone and laid it as a pillar, poured oil on it. Look at this. What a revelation. And he named that place Bethel, the house of God. And then look at this. He, he makes a deal with God. How many of you like to make deals? <laughs> See, God, God, God knows. God knows who you are and he works at your level. He works what? At your level. Jacob always wants a deal. With Laban, he made a deal. With his mother, he made a deal. With his father, he made a deal. He's a deal maker. Even with God in Peniel, he tried to make a deal. And then he said, you, let me touch your hip. And then he's like, oh, I cannot make your deal anymore. You overcame. Look at what he's saying. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, here God is saying, I'll be with you. He's saying, if God will be with me, keep me in the way. He did not trust God. He believed in his transaction. I want you to, I want to talk to somebody here. God is moving somebody in this congregation from a transactional relationship with God to a real relationship with God. If you do this, 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 then I will serve you. And here he's saying, if God will continue to stay with me, keep me in this way that I'm going, give me bread to eat, clothing to put on. 
basic needs so that I come back to my father's house in peace then the Lord shall be my God and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house and of all that you give me I will surely give you what was he in the time of Moses where was Jacob he was not in the so-called law period hello can I talk to somebody here some of the theologians will argue and say oh tithe came from Moses tithe did not come from Moses this time Jacob Abraham Isaac even I can go back and tell you Melchizedek Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek it's not because of the law and here it says I will pay you tithe and what happened to Jacob God blessed Jacob I want you to know something if you cannot serve God with the mammon you cannot serve God with your heart did, it, did you hear me did you hear me if money because God compared in the whole Bible God compared to himself to only one other thing either you will serve what me or what mammon. why the mammon has such power that's why when you have an encounter with God listen to me carefully when you have an encounter with God, when heavens opens, when there is angelic activity, when there is revelation of the church, the house of God, and the promise coming fulfilled, coming back, God always would watch that how you handle your money. Let me ask you this. If I'm struggling to pay tithe, why would you give you an harvest? Hello? Are you listening to me? What is the value of a soul? Come on, somebody, can somebody give me a numerical value of a soul? Thousand dollars? A million? And some people will say, Oh, Pastor John, it's only because I'm struggling, I'm not tithing. I'm only making two thousand dollars. So when I come to a place, when I make a big deal, when million dollars comes in, I will tell you will not if you cannot give tithing to God if you cannot give to God if you cannot give unto the Lord when you're making ten dollars you will not make it even if you make ten thousand dollars or even ten million dollars because money has cut your heart I'm talking to somebody here in year 2024 God is going to deal with you give what you're supposed to give to the Lord you will see your family turn around you will see protection you will see covering you see blessing you see I cannot explain it you got to hear it in your spirit I'm not talking emotional giving I'm not talking about manipulative giving I'm talking about your spirit man like Jacob obeying God saying I'm going to give one to like Abraham gave his tenth to Melchizedek oh it is out of the goodness of God I want to bless him I don't have time and I want to wrap this I want to go to Ezra's time when Ezra's time and the nation fell back Ezra came and prayed fasted and prayed and said God give us a measure of revival revive us Lord rebuild and repair the altars I want to tell you something as a nation don't give up praying for America can I talk to you just for a minute can I get your attention please can you just open your eyes and look at me can you sit up this is very important I want to talk to you do not follow the news do not follow any political party do your job who you need to elect that's your business I'm not going to tell you but there is one thing I want to tell you the church needs to be awake to pray see during the time of the captivity Ezra came 
saw the church was in ruins and God raised a foreign king, gave him the money. He came from the word of God, came, repaired the church, everything. And then he went back again. They fell into sin. They fell into the old ways. Then again, he comes, pulls his hair and tears his clothes, sackcloth, repenting and praying, saying, God, revive us once again that we may come back to you. I want to tell you people, it, but it's not about abortion. It's not about this. It's not about that. Not about this. I'm not even going there. We as the church, listen to me. Your prayers are important for the future of this nation. Your prayer is important for the world missions. Your prayer is important for the world harvest. Your prayer is important oh, for the kingdom of God. Those who have a hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Church, come to me and bend your knees and cry out for America and for the nations, for the gospel to go. Pray that we will come to a certain place in the kingdom of God, that heavens will open, a ladder will come from heaven, that heaven will kiss earth, and the gates of heaven will open, that the kingdom of God will come more than ever before, that the church will arise in this moment. Hallelujah. Come on, stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, begin to cry out. Let's begin to cry out for America one second. Come on, everybody pray for America. For the sake of your grandchildren. For the sake of your children. For the sake of your future. No Trump. No Republican. No Democratic President. Not President Biden. I don't know who's going to be in the office. And nobody can save America except Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, let's just cry out to God. Say, God. Oh, let the kingdom of God come forth. Let the kingdom of God come forth in America, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, like Ezra, we cry out. Revive us, God. Revive America, God. Somebody got to pray. Come on, don't watch me. Open your mouth. Come on. Don't watch me. Come on, open your mouth. Young and old. Pray for the nation. Pray for the future of this country. Hallelujah. Oh, that they will seek God. America will come back to God. America will serve Jesus. Every idol of entertainment will be broken. Every idol of mammonism will be broken. Broken. Every idol of materialism will be broken. That we will serve for the reason we came. To serve and worship the true and the living God. Bring us back on our knees, God. Oh, revive us, God. Oh, let's repent for looking to a man to help. Let's repent for looking to a political party to help. Let's repent. Let's say, God, no arm of flesh can save this nation. Only God can save this nation, God. I'm telling you prophetically, oh, don't quit praying. Let your living rooms become a prayer altar. Let your living rooms become a prayer altar. Let your dining table become a prayer altar. Let our churches become a prayer altar. Women's meeting become a prayer altar. Men's meeting become a prayer altar. Children need to pray. Young adults need to pray. All the women need to pray. Oh, young people need to pray. Oh, we got to pray. All of us time. We are at a crucial moment. Hear me, America. We are at a crucial moment. Everything is lying on the knees of the church that is bended. Hallelujah. Everything is on the cry of the people of God. Can we cry out to him, say, God, let the heavens open once more over America. We call forth for the promise. We call forth for the harvest. We call forth for the souls, God. Oh, let schools talk about Jesus again. Let there be revival in schools. Let there be revival among the young people. We want to see strip clubs shut down. We want to see bars closed. We want to see churches filled. We want to see, oh God, a revival. We want to see an awakening. We want to see a revival in a generation that has never seen before God. Oh, touch America in Jesus' name. Don't give up on yourself. God is with you. God is for you. He will keep you wherever you go. Father bless your people in Jesus name. Amen.